name is Molly Hicks and I'm one of the board members and session leaders here. We're going to talk tonight about resilience and I wanted to share a quote um, before I share a graphic on the screen and then I'll be playing some music that speaks to some of the themes um, that I'll share uh, verbally as well as on the screen with you. Um, some of you may know of Father Richard Rohr's daily meditations and he's been doing a lot with radical re uh, resilience recently in those meditations, which is part of how I got the inspiration for this session tonight. Um, there's also a wonderful teacher who I had the pleasure to learn from in a webinar a couple weeks ago named Matthew Sanford, and he is a teacher of adaptive yoga. Um, he has been paralyzed since the age of 13 and uh, teaches all kinds of folks how to do yoga in the bodies that they have with the abilities that they have. And I love his quote on resilience. He says, resilience is not the ability to withstand, it's the ability to change your shape. So it's not just about muscling through or pushing through, it's really not about that at all. It's about adapting, changing our shape in order to confront change and grief. And I feel like we can develop resilience as individuals um, through whatever spiritual practices we have, um, through whatever brings us joy, brings us connection with others, brings us connection to something greater than ourselves. Um, there are many, many tools to developing and strengthening our resilience. Um, and so please, as you listen to the music, as you hear the concepts that I'll share, think about how it fits um, in your own practice. If you have a religious tradition, if you have um, more personal spiritual practices that you follow or both. So I'm gonna share on the screen um, a graphic that I will be leaving up while I play. Um, and you don't have to you don't have to look at this graphic the whole time. It's just there for your reference. Um, but this is a graphic that I created on developing resilience. And it has six different um, concepts, six different aspects of developing resilience. And this comes from some work by Pauline Boss, who is a researcher and writer on grief and bereavement, specifically on ambiguous loss. So sometimes uh, those losses that are really hard to kind of pin down or losses where someone may still be um, physically present, but not really, um, not really psychologically or emotionally present, or they might be um, physically absent, but still very much psychologically present in our lives. Um, so I'm just gonna read these. The, the concepts are Pauline, Pauline Bosses, and the italicized texts are um, things that I wrote to kind of put it in lay person's terms. Finding meaning. I do not have to find meaning within this loss itself. I do not have to believe everything happens for a reason unless I want to. Still, if I use my senses and let others support me, I can catch glimpses of meaning in the world around me. Adjusting mastery. I lack control over the outcome. Closure is a myth. I can move through grief rather than striving to get over it. Reconstructing identity. I am different than I was before this happened. I deserve to explore who I am now and to reclaim the parts of me that endure. This will take time. Normalizing ambivalence. I will continue to feel a multitude of emotions, some of which feel conflicting. This is part of being human and is okay. I may even feel more intense moments of joy coexisting with this deep grief. Revising attachment. 
The world I assumed would always be available to me has changed. There's so much I've been holding on to. Loosening my grip can help bring me peace. Discovering new hope. Even if it does not feel realistic, I am open to glimmers of promise in the distance. I do not have to feel guilty when life starts to bring me more contentment, inspiration, and connection. I am still alive and deserve to live. So as I'm sharing the songs that will follow, I'm gonna leave this graphic up on the screen and I will also invite you to, if you feel called to, put anything in the chat that speaks to you from the music. It might be um, a line of lyrics, it might be a single word, it might be some kind of concept in the song that connects to one of these ideas here on the screen. But my um, selecting the songs tonight, I, I selected them all consciously because each one of them connects with one or more of these ideas. And so I hope that this time together will give us a, a broader and deeper view of resilience more than the, the kind of cultural buzzword that it has become. And I hope that you gain some new insight in this time together. The first song is an original of mine called We Are Bound, about connecting with one another when we experience grief. And in that way, finding new meaning and discovering new hope. Yeah. 
It is in part realizing that we're bound together, that we can find meaning and discover new hope, and also help one another with that idea of normalizing ambivalence, accepting all the emotions that are present. In this process of letting go, we necessarily have to make room for different emotions, for those emotions that may feel like they conflict, those experiences that seem diametrically opposed but are really part of the full experience of being human. I have a um, I have a couple 
couple of songs that are originals that that speak to this concept and I like to share them both hopefully the motorcycles will finish going by my window first um, but that's part of accepting the, the conflicting experiences of life right so this one is called perfectly imperfect and this is a collaborative song um, I can also make up the words to go in the song but I would love it if um, folks who are with us tonight would be willing to put in some um, either emotions or struggles that you might have. Nothing doesn't have to be anything um, detailed. It could just be like a feeling that you struggle with. So I'm going to put in the chat anxiety. Um, it could be anything that you uh, struggle with. The song says um, it just has space for people to share what it is that they are going through. So I am or I feel. And then the chorus is very simple. The refrain is I am perfectly imperfect. We are perfectly imperfect. The world is perfectly imperfect. So feel free to put some things in the chat. about this song is that the chords are really hard so inevitably I mess up the chords but that's okay because it's me living out the song and playing the music imperfectly.
Contributing to that song, everyone. I'm going to share one more song tonight as we reflect on, continue to reflect on building resilience and the different aspects of it. This song is called Savor the Moment. And it's a song, it's probably one of the oldest songs that I still play. Um, oldest songs that I've written, I should say, that I still play. I wrote it about 12 or 13 years ago. And um, it's about understanding that I have to feel pain as well as pleasure. It's, it's again part of that idea of normalizing ambivalence and um, also adjusting, adjusting mastery could really actually fit into any of these themes that I don't have control over the outcome I don't have control over not feeling pain but I can by working toward acceptance on a day to day moment to moment basis that I can maybe decrease some of my suffering I will feel pain but perhaps the suffering can be somewhat eased So the refrain says, savor the moment. This is what it's like to be alive. Grant that I might seek not only to survive, but to thrive.
So just in closing, I'm going to just read the last couple lines under Discovering New Hope. Even if it does not feel realistic, I'm open to glimmers of promise in the distance. I do not have to feel guilty when life starts to bring me more contentment, inspiration, and connection. I am still alive and deserve to live. I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, feel free to put any closing thoughts that you might have in the chat. And um, I just want to read one more brief quote from Matthew Sanford. I read one of his quotes at the beginning. He also said in this um, webinar that I attended with him that in order to be resilient, we have to practice noticing the sensations of support around us. So I'm going to say that again. In order to build resilience, we have to notice the sensations of support around us. So I hope that you feel supported by our time together tonight and by this community. Um, we're always available to you. Just reach out anytime. Uh, we hope that some of you will be able to join us this Wednesday evening at 7 for our author talk with Randy Woodley. Um, please join us there. And we're always grateful for any of the support that you can um, provide in terms of spreading the word about alignment um, or making a donation if you feel called to do so. Thank you all so very much.